Good evening and welcome to our Monday Thursday evening service. The uh, first of uh, three services that make up our Triduum or three great days uh, that uh, are in Holy Week. Uh, we thank you for joining us and uh, we look forward to being with you in person once the COVID-19 coronavirus crisis has abated. Uh, God bless you all and uh, enjoy these three days. And now we begin our worship with our prelude. Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we were called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter the celebration of the great three days, reconciled with God and with one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen.
Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin 
and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, here we are on Monday, Thursday, the, one of the holiest days of the year, a day in which we remember Jesus' uh, supper with his disciples, especially that piece of the evening where Jesus washes the disciples' feet. We really have uh, a task ahead of us in the next few days and frankly in the next few weeks as we continue to shelter in place as we com continue to take care of each other by staying home and staying away from places uh, that we don't need to go it's been interesting to see the church struggling with what it means to be the church in the midst of the COVID-19 coronavirus there have been lots and lots of, of uh, social media posts, a lot of uh, back and forth between pastors and theologians and, and, uh, and lay folks who are studying and trying to figure out how to do things as the church in this day and time. One of the things that we're struggling with most is the concept of Holy Communion. What does it mean to break bread and to drink wine with each other as we are separated from each other? Isn't the body and blood of Christ and Holy Communion a, a visible sign of our togetherness as we gather on Sunday mornings and other times to share in the body and blood of Christ? There have been all sorts of uh, speculation about what is valid communion, what is right communion. Um, is it okay for you at home to, to have a piece of bread and a glass of wine and as you watch this service to hold those up at the proper time and then receive communion with you and your family? Are we supposed to abstain from Holy Communion together because of our social distancing and, and, and in order to, to uh, separate ourselves so that the virus can play out its course and, and we can sort of bring down the curve as we've been called to do? One of my favorite uh, Concepts, maybe, or one of my favorite uh, sort of ways of looking at communion is that we should all be, or should all could be, I guess I should say, not should be, but could be, we could all be taking advantage of, of what would best be called a fast from the sacrament, a fast from Holy Communion. 
that in this time of uh, social distancing, in this time of staying away from our church building, we are being forced to then also reflect upon Holy Communion's past and reflect upon Holy Communion's future as a way for us to commune with each other and to, and to uh, learn more in, within ourselves about the sacrament. A couple of great examples of this uh, are how the uh, Israelites, as they left Egypt, uh, celebrated the Passover one time, but then for the next 40 years, they didn't celebrate the Passover until they were in the Promised Land. Also, the, the rite of circumcision for males during the wandering in the wilderness was suspended for 40 years, but then picked back up when the people were given the promised land and settled down and, and became a community again. Probably the most poignant thought for me is Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who was jailed and, and didn't receive the, the celebration of communion with the body of Christ during the time that he was imprisoned, and yet wrote eloquently about the meaning of the sacrament, wrote eloquently about the body and blood of Christ and, and what that means. So you need to somehow figure out for yourself what it means to not be here, to not be here for this Monday Thursday, to not have your feet washed, to not have the bread and the wine, I am here to help you talk that through, if that's something that you would like to do. I'm also here to, to take you Holy Communion in a safe and, and uh, in isolated way so that, so that you can feel a part of the body of Christ if that's what you need to do. If you do decide that you want to receive communion in your home tonight as you watch this service, maybe during the hymn of the day as we're singing, you go into your kitchen and you find a piece of bread and a, a bit of uh, wine or juice to have at your table with you as you watch tonight's uh, service. We are being called upon to do things in a new way. And instead of thinking of it as a burden, I think of the psalmist who says, Sing to the Lord a new song, a new song that we've never sung before. The most important thing about tonight this Monday Thursday service, this Monday Thursday uh, lessons, is to think about what Jesus did when he washed the disciples' feet. He said to them, I give you this command to love one another. That is what we are celebrating today. That we recognize the sacrifice of Jesus, we recognize who Jesus is, and we follow Jesus, and we follow Jesus' mandate to love one another. God bless you all. Amen.
your mercy is great. God of love, tend to flocks, fields, and vineyards. Bring favorable weather for crops to grow. Guide the hands of those who cultivate farm and garden. Let the earth flourish so that all may eat and be satisfied. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of love, you give us a new commandment to love one another. We give thanks for organizations that respond to disasters and for agencies that offer relief and humanitarian aid to populations in need. We thank you for our first-line medical defenders and, and servants, those doctors, nurses, researchers, and technicians who are so much needed today and who are doing such hard work. We thank you for those who keep us safe, for first responders, sheriffs and police officers, and all those who guide us. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. God of love, give, give ear to all who call upon you for any need of body or spirit. We pray especially for those on our prayer list and for all those who are struggling with the coronavirus. Provide for those who do not have enough to eat, those who are un unemployed or underemployed, and those who rely on the generosity of others. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy is great. God of love, you invite us to your table of mercy. Heal all divisions between members of this assembly, gathered here and abroad. Extend the hospitality of this table beyond these walls, that your love and welcome be made known to all. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy is great. God of love, Glorify your servants who walk by faith in this life and who now feast with you. Inspire us by the sacrifice of those who were imprisoned, persecuted, or martyred for their faith. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of glory, receive these gifts and the offering of our lives. As Jesus was lifted up from the earth, draw us to your heart in the midst of this world, that all creation may be brought from bondage to freedom, from darkness to light, and from death to life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
The universe declares your praise beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell, with every breath. We praise you, O God. Generations bless your faithfulness through the water by night and day, across the wilderness, out of exile, into the future. We praise you, O God. We give you thanks for your dear Son at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. We thank you, O God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his love for us on the way, at the table, and to the end, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We pray for the gift of your spirit in our gathering, within this meal, among your people, throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Jesus Christ, by your spirit in your church, without end. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in a wonderful sacrifice, 
sacrament, you strengthen us with the saving power of your suffering, death, and resurrection. May the sacrament of your body and blood so work in us that the fruits of your redemption will show forth in the way we live. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night you find no rest. Yet you are holy and enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our ancestors trusted. They trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not human, scorned by others and despised by the people. Remain here with me. Why? 
not to be far away. O oh, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion, from the thorns of the wild oxen. You have rescued me. I will tell you my name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. Remain here with me. 